Welcome to Intim Conversations with your girl Talitha Kume, presented by Food for the Soul Media Group on Hot 702.5 FM and live on our FB page, Food for the Soul Media Group. Stay tuned in, you guys, and we will be right back. In these uncertain times, everyone needs a hand up. Becoming a sponsor or making a donation to Food for the Soul Media Group is a great opportunity to help. Intimate Conversations with Talitha and Bobby airs every Saturday at 1 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Hot 702.5 FM Streaming Radio and live on our FB page. Intimate Conversations discusses all of those topics we don't like to talk about. Become a sponsor or donate today at foodforthesoulmediagroup.press or email us at foodforthesoulpresents at gmail.com. Let's talk about it. Welcome back, and thank you for tuning in this afternoon to Intimate Conversations with Talitha and Bobby, presented by Food for the Soul Media Group, here on Hot 702.5 FM and on our Food for the Soul FB page. If you guys haven't already, go like our page, follow us on Instagram at Food for the Soul Media Group and Orlay Worldwide, and subscribe to our YouTube stations, Food for the Soul Media Group and Intimate Conversations. And if you guys would like to, you can call in and be a part of our conversation today by calling 702 702- Five five one five two six one, or you can comment on our Facebook page, and don't forget to hashtag us at hashtag Food for the Soul and Intimate Conversations. So again, our theme for the month has been Mind Your Business, and this is our last Saturday of April, and today we want to finish discussing. Oh, uh, we, we actually we don't want to finish this. We want to finish discussing Mind Your Own Business, which pretty much is talking about businesses. So we're talking about you and your business and some of the things that um, can hurt your business, some of the things that are good for your business. And last week, we talked about some things. But this week, we're going to talk about Generation Z customer service and why it sucks. So we're going to talk about Generation Z customer service, why it sucks. And then also, we're going to talk about black business customer service versus other cultures customer service. Yeah. And... We have a special guest in the building, our good friend Kasha Brown of Brown Girl Inc. Agency. And we are looking for guests for the month of May. So, you guys, if you guys are interested, make sure you hit us up. And you can also, um, you can inbox us or you can email us at foodforthesoulpresents at gmail.com. But first, we want to find out more about my girl, Kasha Brown. So, tell the listeners and viewers a little bit about yourself Well, hello, everyone. I'm Kasha Brown, and I currently live in Los Angeles, California, hailing from Dallas, Texas. Um, Right now, I actually am an active PR agency. Oh, right. And I started my own agency after working internships with other individuals under their umbrellas, Mm -hmm. as well as kind of doing some red carpet um, interviews for some award shows, TV shows, movie premieres, etc. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of got the bug for it. You know, my background is kind of like dealing with crisis management, dealing with helping people, you know, better themselves anyway. So it kind of just made sense. So I just created my own agency. Nice. Well, all right, Kasha Brown. Um, how long have you been doing that, you said? you. I have been doing that full time, actually a year and a half. So just kind of like you know, uh, with someone else under their own umbrella, under other people's umbrellas, Mm -hmm. probably around three to four years. Okay. Okay. Nice. And you liken that more than um, being in front of the camera. Yes? No? Maybe? Uh, I think I can do it all. That's kind of what the agency represents. It's an umbrella. So, therefore, you can actually be in front of the camera, behind the camera, writing for people who are going to be on camera. It's just a collective. Okay. So, yeah. So, it's going to be, you know, open for different uh, opportunities for people in the future to be able to Come be a part of my agency. Tell us some of the people you work with. Have you worked with some? some I work some? with Food for the Soul. <laughs> ah, see, so you I can't. I work for Food for the Soul, Talitha Kume. Uh, what other people have oh, you worked other with? People. Have you worked with any celebrities or anything like that? Have you gotten your big um, break talking to some people? Just a few people, um, you know, here and there. 
Okay. I don't really like to, you See, know, she don't, she name don't, drop. She doesn't, she doesn't want to name, brag or name drop, I'm sorry, or no. brag. And, and I'm giving her the opportunity to let us know some of the people she's been working with. But I've seen some of the people she's been working with. And I know that you work with the funny comedian Lou Nail. And so oh, yeah, I was amazing. so I was so excited to see you working with her because she is doing big things, man. She's she doing, is. She's doing really big things. I've seen her come into her second wind, I guess, if you if you would say She's that. amazing. I really feel like her career is just now getting started. I mean, mm-hmm. she's been around for some time, but I definitely feel like she's a voice to re- be reckoned with. Mm-hmm. Um, people just need to realize that she's a, a powerhouse. Yeah. I yeah. think sometimes people want to just, you know, put her into one lane as, oh, she's a comedian, but she's like the original yeah. bad girl of comedy plus yeah, actress is. plus mm-hmm. actually she started off doing uh, radio. Oh, okay. So I believe back I in Oakland that. she used to do radio, and now she has her own podcast, Hey Lunell, uh, you know, innocent plug for her. Ooh, ooh. And I actually yes. work with her as her stylist. So okay. I, I don't do her PR. She has an amazing publicist by the name of Walisa, mm-hmm. but I actually work as her stylist okay, and cool. assistant at times when she needs help. Cool, cool. All right, you guys. Well, we're going to get into our show. Last week we talked about the state I'm in and the best and worst places to be in business for the small business owner. But today, we're going to talk about the longevity with your customer service. Me and Bobby B talk about this all the time. Um, Bobby has a real, real pet peeve for bad customer service. So do you, I I do, but not as bad as you. I mean, like, you, you know, you flip stuff over sometimes and, you know what I'm saying, and throw stuff at the window and stuff. I mean, he really just just cannot stand it. And so we're going to talk about that, and then we're going to talk about some other stuff, and then we're going to get back to Kasha and some of the things that she um, has coming up. But um, it says, I found this first article, it says, the cost of bad customer service. It says, did you know that more than half of Americans have scraped um, a planned purchase or, or scrapped a planned purchase or transaction because of bad customer service. Yeah. 33% of Americans say they'll consider switching companies after just a single instance of poor service. U.S. companies lose more than $62 billion annually due to poor customer service. Americans tell an average of 15 people about a poor service customer service experience versus the 11 people that they'll tell about a good experience. Seventy-four percent of people are likely to switch brands if they find the purchasing process too difficult. And after one negative experience, 51 percent of customers will never do business with that company again. So those are stats. And then the seven examples of bad customer service that they said was putting customers on hold for too long, using negative language, transferring callers again and again, asking customers to repeat themselves or agents that do not offer any type of empathy or directing customers to the website instead of handling their issue. It drives your business. And so if it drives your business, then you would think that that should be your number one priority is making sure that you have good customer service. So I want to talk about this Generation Z workers and how they how they are handling our customers, especially during this COVID. And so I wanted to ask you guys, and Bobby, I'll ask you first, um, what have you seen with this generation? Because I know we talk about it a lot, and I, and I know we kind of uh, we give Generation Z a bad rap when it comes to a lot of things but what do you think about them and customer service these young kids that are working in the fast food places and in the um in other customer service areas and stores and different things like that yeah they're uh they're just i feel bad for them these kids are so distracted and they're always on their phones and their distractions come through when you order like our experience yesterday Kids are just, it's just sad. I don't know what we can do to help them, you know. Mm-hmm. I personally don't understand and know what to do from this standpoint of mm-hmm. helping these kids who are already out in this workforce Yeah. Um, with this type of bad training. Okay. It's bad. What about you, Kasha? What do you, um, what do you think? Um, I think that the generation today that I've actually kind of, they kind of have like a, um, let me say it this way. We kind of grew up in the era of the customer's always right. 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 And I feel like they grew up in the, or growing up in the era of 
no, you're wrong. <laughs> and <laughs> well, and I, because I have my vo- own voice, I'm going to let you know that you're wrong, and I don't mind losing this job behind that. Right. So I think because of that, I feel like the generation that we're dealing with now, you said, what do you call them, Z? Yeah, Generation Z. I feel like they just have no um, tolerance for nothing. Yeah. Whether it's custom service, whether it's violence, which I know we're not talking about that. They just yeah. kind of like whatever, whatever goes, yeah, they're whatever. De- they don't desensitize. Exactly. There you go. Right. They okay. are. And they just yeah. kind of react. Reactionary. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's a good word for that. Reactionary. So. Um, I think that it's, it's, very, it, it, it's really hard to figure out how to help in ways just because I think that the training starts at home. So yeah. that's the hard part. If they're not getting training at home, then it just kind of is going to go awry no matter where they go. And the crazy part about it is I think that Generation Z is actually would be, I think they would be my grandbabies, I think. So I don't even think that they, are they my grandbabies? Let me think. Not um, necessarily. They would maybe be my grandbabies. I'm not sure. Let me uh, let me see. Because my little sister, my youngest sister is 20. Five, so she's a millennial, right? Mm-hmm. So anybody after her, nineteen eighty gen- to ninety four, I believe, is Generation is Z. Millennial. That's millennial, right? Yeah. Okay, so ninety five and after would be Generation Z, then correct? Correct. Okay, so ninety five and after. Yeah, I think that would still be my kid. Okay, and so for for us then, it seems like it's on the parents to me a little bit. It's on us to. It's to, only to it's only on the parents because there's no bigger organization where everybody can go relearn right. other than school. Okay. You know, like these kids are going to workforce and not learning these type things at school anymore. We yeah. used to have like home ec and then parenting and have all in classes back in the day. I don't think the kids had that stuff anymore. No, they don't. They don't. I don't think they. I don't think they offer home ec or any that any of that. I think they're too busy offering um, how to do sex is probably yeah, what busy, they have nowadays. Yeah, yeah. It, it, too busy offering sexual right. education on how to do all this other stuff that just you know they don't need any help learning how to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like right. what? What are you? What are you doing? So we had sex education that just kind of showed us. If I remember back in the day, it showed uh, girls when they got their you know their menstruation. Their menstruation mm-hmm. showed us how to you know how to put on a pad so we wouldn't be all embarrassed. You know, right. <laughs> at school trying right. to figure out what the heck is going on with us. And then um, it showed us the anatomy of ourselves, you know, and of boys. But it didn't show us anything else. So this this new generation is, is real, real different. Well, what about a story? Do you guys have a story of, like, the worst customer service um, you can remember having? Like, Bobby, do you have a story? Have, of you? Do you? Okay. I, Gosh, I, I definitely have a recent one. Let's go. Yeah, let's go and with it's that. with Enterprise Car Rental. Man. I'll tell you who it's with. This was in actual, this was recent, as in uh, a few weeks ago, okay. and it was in East Texas. Tyler, Texas, to be exact. Oh, man. Um, so I, re- <laughs> I reserved a vehicle. I'm still upset about it, as mm-hmm. you can tell. Mm-hmm. I reserved a vehicle, and um, after doing so, of course, you got your confirmation, et cetera. So I went to pick up the vehicle early, right when they opened. It was people already there in line, et cetera. I'm going to fast forward the story. So by the time it got to me, it was a gentleman in front of me. And I noticed that he had downgraded his luxury vehicle, which was a, an extensive amount of money due to the shortage, to the vehicle that I had reserved. And I was like, okay, that sounds like what I'm supposed to be getting. So when I get there, oh, ma'am, we rented the last. Okay, is that the one that he <laughs> just rented or whatever? And so he was like, yeah, you know, just wait for a little while, whatever. A little while turns into an hour. And so then at that particular time, I went up there and asked the question to the, the manager. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm wondering if I can get an update. He was like, you know, just give it a little bit of time. You know, someone may turn one in or we'll call around, et cetera. Oh, yeah, it turned into two hours. So I'm seeing people come in, getting cars, reservations, no problem. So by that time, I said, I went up there. I was like, excuse me, sir. I said, I'm just trying to get an update on the vehicle. I said, I was supposed to be back in Dallas by a certain time. Just explaining to him. the And, and I was very nice and professional about it. So he yells, well, ma'am, like I told you, I don't have any control over it, whatever, whatever, whatever. So now I'm sitting down in my chair. I said, well, sir, all I asked to do was be updated. I said, because I understand you're doing your job, but people are getting vehicles, and I'm not understanding that because I have a reservation too. Then he started elevating his voice. Not only did he elevate his voice, he came from behind the counter, which had the glass where you can actually talk, and stood over me, which was a very intimidating stance to take. And he was, and I'm looking up at him while he's talking or whatever. So he was like, gave me the like I said. Now, to me, that's... That's 
not that's not acceptable. It's demeaning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and so I he, got your like he I went said. through like I said. So I said, all right. So I said, okay. Well, what you're gonna need to do, and this is what really gets people, I believe, especially when you're calm when you say it. What you're gonna need to do is calm down and lower your your tone because I'm not yelling at you and you're yelling at me, and this is not how you're supposed to talk to customers. And he was like, you know what, you gotta leave. I was like, for what? Like, why are you asking me to leave? Leave my establishment. And he turned around and walked off. So he wouldn't tell me why I had to leave. He he just kind of walked off. But in my mind, of course, thinking of recent police incidents, people calling the police, the police show up with guns or whatever. I didn't want to be that person that right. they come in there with a gun on because you said there's an irate black All woman in your. You it, yeah, and I didn't. And the right. only thing I did was ask the other gentleman, <clears throat> "How can you give me your the manager's name?" They walked out of the building, so I finally got a card and I walked out. So I literally, for the past two to three weeks, have been calling different corporates of enterprise. I've sent three to four emails. I've gotten two reference numbers from people where I've actually made a complaint, and I have yet to got, get a response back from enterprise corporate about how this person um, was very demeaning. He was very confrontational. There was no reason for you to stand over me when you can actually speak with me through the glass in a pandemic with your mask slightly lifted so that you can get your point across. And, and I mean, it was a, it could have been a scary moment, I guess I should say. I wasn't scared of him, but to have this man over you trying to tell you what you're not going to do or that was that was unacceptable, mm -hmm. and right. I rent for enterprise from enterprise all the time. And I've never had any complaints or problems. Well, so. I've never rent there again, so that can lick so my. So y'all know anybody with corporate from enterprise? Hit me up in my inbox because I yeah. really want to continue to go to the top of this. And here's the deal: Gosh, I recorded him, so okay. I, I recorded the conversation of him talking to me, and I let him know, "Hey, I'm letting you know that I am recording this conversation because I know in Texas you have to do that." Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, and it's a recorded conversation that I had with him of him talking to me that way. So yeah. Wow, what persuasion? I don't know. He was, he was, I don't know if he was Puerto Rican or if he was Creole or if he was mm. whatever. Cause you know, we come in all different shades. I just mm. know he, he didn't appear to be Caucasian or Hispanic, but mm. I, I don't know, okay. to be honest. Yeah, his yeah. name is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that his last name is Thompson. I know that. I think yeah. it's like a Joel Thompson or Man. Joel Thompson. Man, Thompson. Man. Yes. Miss, Mr. Thompson, maybe you were having Mr. a Hill. really, yeah, no, I, well yeah. maybe, maybe you were having a really, really bad day and I get that not bad day as in shooting up people bad day mm. but bad day as in you know you don't have cars and people are all in your face or whatever and you took it out on our good friend Kasha Brown but um sorry for you because she's yeah she's she's persistent yeah I'm still so going gonna, with this so <laughs> she's gonna so you know she's gonna make yeah, it happen one way or off. another what about you Bobby have you experienced any well we experienced bad customer service all the time but have you experienced something that was so bad to where you were like, man. I don't know if it's any worse than any normal. <laughs> I mean, normal situations. Mm -hmm. But that one, that one little incident that we had at that cafe. What's it called? Cafe Rio or some mm -hmm. trash out here. Mm, uh, trash. Yeah, trash. A yeah. whole group of stupid ass little kids, man. Yeah, we I, won't go back. I made a I made an order online. I pull up there. Forty minutes later, the thing says it'd be done like thirty minutes. I pull up thirty, forty minutes later, and I get in there, and. Oh, sorry, we don't have this. Why don't you say that when I order online? Well, can I change it for this? No. Then they try to give me uh, something substantially lower than what I what I would have gotten for for an exchange. <laughs> and I was like, Nah, that's dumb. Why don't you give me my money back? No. Nah, well, you have to call corporate, and they gave me a number telling me I have to call corporate for a mill number for my money back, right? So I was like, Okay, I got you. I gave them all their food back and uh, um, hit corporate anyway and got that back. Mm -hmm. You know, but it was just a bad experience, man. Yeah. From then, I was like, from that from that day on, it was. I've been making it a stern point to cook at the crib because it it's f your kids. I'm not with it. One one little thing with that too, Bobby. Just yesterday when I came up because I'm oh, yeah. actually in Vegas at the moment. Went to Wendy's. I'm just calling man. names today. I mm -hmm. went to Wendy's call him, call him and out. I was enjoying this uh, the Asiago Ranch uh, <laughs> chicken sandwich, spicy. Mm -hmm. Okay, just the way innocent plug. But so I'm enjoying my sandwich. I'm talking to Bobby. We you know having a good conversation. And I took a bite. I was like, wow, this is really tough in the this middle here. Chewy, I'm like, what is this? Paper, like a big old piece of paper. paper. Uh, but it wasn't. It wasn't like a. It was thick. Piece yeah. of paper, so they like left parchment it on the, paper. They left it on yeah, the cheese. Oh, it was grilled in with yeah. the cheese. It was a part Ooh. of the sandwich. Yeah. And I, I just sit there for a second trying to process, like, okay. <laughs> so we went up there, back up there or whatever. So I'm telling the gentleman at the counter, like, you know, hey, you know, this is my sandwich. I just found this in my sandwich. He looking at it. He dissecting it really hard. He was like, yeah, that right there, that's the cheese paper. Why are you telling me this? Okay, I know well, why don't you 
take the sandwich and because oh. he was like, yeah, that look like that's what that is a cheeseburger. You want to make another one? Yeah, I do. I want you to make me another one? But it was like crazy because I'm like, he's really dissecting like, oh, that's gonna be the cheese paper right there. That's what yeah, that is. This Asiago cheese paper. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Fix it, sir, God or whatever. Man. You know. But it, it, I did get my sandwich, so thanks. I'm with Shout e out to I'm me. with Ecrease on this. I blame <laughs> us for now, these kids being bummy. It's because she said I, that. It's, yeah, I said the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's, us just stay on the phones and this and that. Wait, you blame us for what now? Well, it's us. Our generations what made these kids. Yeah, that's why I said it's, it's us. They're why? disconnected because disconnect, the we're always on the phone. Okay, you dig what I'm saying? Yeah. No, but okay. well, why? Always, why are we to blame? Because for them. Of, because if you look at the parents, like parents who didn't stay, yeah, we're talking about who don't parents. stay on the phone right. all day uh -huh. and uh, tend to their kids, they yeah. have a different kind of. Those kids have a different kind of outreach and a different a different. Okay. I don't know, carry, I believe. I can respect yeah. that. I, you know, I see what you're saying. The kids who are raised by moms and dads who stay on their phones, those kids are so damn disconnected. And you look at kids closely. Yeah. And you yeah. can see it, man. Like Disconnected, East Korea, that's, that's exactly okay. what I would say. Matter of fact, so I re true. matter of fact, that brings me uh, to a situation. And it wasn't a bad customer service experience for myself. But remember when we had gone to um, to that one place that we go to sometimes, we were sit. You were inside, and I was sitting outside. And I video recorded. I recorded on my phone this lady who was on her phone standing outside. And I guess she was waiting for somebody inside. Her children were, playing were in running traffic. around her, right. playing in the street, playing in the driveway of this building. And mind you, busy the, the, establishment. Right, right. The business right. is on. Um, I want to say it was on. It's on Sahara or Las it's Vegas on like Boulevard Paradise. or something like that. Over there in a minute. Got okay. a call. So Paradise. So it's on Paradise, and they are running around, and she is on her phone the whole entire Caller hang tight. time. O M G. Okay, we got a caller, so we'll go ahead and and get this caller because we want somebody to talk about bad customer service. Call. Yeah. So caller, you're here. Hey. You're on the air with Food for the Soul. How can I help you? Hey, what's up, y'all? Hey. Hey. Hey, fine ass e grease. Hey, what's happening? Can you hear, can you hear yourself? Yeah, I, right. I, I can hear you guys. I can hear you personally. Okay, good. Um, so listen, so listen. I hear you guys talking about the Gen Zs and yes. the. Um, so I think what's happening is that we might be confusing the millennials with the Gen Zs because the Gen okay. Zs are young. So and we have a whole show. We have a whole show here, a morning show that only has Gen Zs on it. Okay, and. Um, the Gen Zs, in terms of technology, have been disconnected. Okay. So, like, like trying to get them to do something on social media is a challenge, okay, because they do not want to use social media. Whereas the hmm. millennials, the millennials are all about the social media. They're on their phones all day. Um, and, and that's, you know, that's a difference. It's like, it's like night or day. So I'm not sure. Okay. And although I did, I did not say... Um, that I blame us for making the Gen Z. No, I didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't say you said that. I said that you did say disconnected, and I just tied everything together. Okay, that, I yeah. said I blame. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the Gen Zs are most definitely in in terms of you know like trying to get them to get things done in terms of a social media you know uh, aspect mm -hmm. is it's like pulling teeth. Okay. So I think that those may be the difference. So maybe they saw the millennials. And the millennials were on their phones too much, and they're like, "No, nah, I'm good. I don't want to be on my phone. Okay, I don't want to do this social media." So that's the, that's the thing. But those two dynamics are completely different. Okay. Hey, does um, the millennials split up? The millennial, yeah, the millennials. Does that split up in two breaks too? Because I know the front half of the millennial, which I fall in, I'm nowhere near the '94 Moni millennials right. that do whatever they do. Yeah. You know. So like the gen the Gen Zs are between six years old and twenty four years old. Oh, okay. So we're uh, so so it's so beyond that, that upper half. Okay. That's when we see the that's when we start see everyone like on, you know, their phones and mm -hmm. and you know, and they yeah. may be I think the millennials are a little bit more raw raw than essentially the gen generation Ys and okay. um, right. I don't know, girl. and X's and all of that. <laughs> yeah, so many. Um, but but yeah, it's interesting how the dynamics are completely like black and white. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, definitely. And and I and I do agree when you guys were talking earlier about the customer service, um, you know, from the millennials being different than yeah. the customer service from the previous generation. Oh, wow. it's just not the same. But I don't know if that has to do with with a societal change where the customer isn't always right. And yes, I'm going to tell you you're wrong because you're not right. right. <laughs> so okay, I right. don't know. Okay. So it's, it's 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 interesting. But you get into some some places like environments to where uh, the customer service is just good and there's really not much error. 
Mm-hmm. So they don't have to worry about that being an excuse or something to fall back on the customer's always right. So they never even teach their people but, that. But but the thing is, is that sometimes I think, am I too old? Like, I think about that. I think, like, okay, it, it, is the way that I'm handling this an old school process? Right. Am I, handling, am I thinking of this from my old school perspective when the world is different? And, right. and just like, just like you know, there's new rap songs that come out and, you know, we like, oh, yeah, no, nah, I'm good. I don't want to listen to that. <laughs> that yeah, that, yeah, totally. Uh, you know, I can't even understand what they're saying, but that's the same thing our parents used to say when rap first, came, you know, really got big. Yeah, absolutely. So, My dad was breaking CDs. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So yeah. yeah, I think that I think that I think that we just have to recognize that you know the way that things are are, are you know there's an evolution in a different perspective. Okay. Um, you know, of the generations, and they communicate differently. And I think that I think that yes, essentially, the previous generation could have formed that new way of you know communication yeah so well just by really quick on that same note okay. because of all this is this the reason why walmart is going because like my buddy works for walmart he's, he's worked there for years he's been telling me about this new cashless or this new checkerless system that they're going to implement and uh i start i started seeing it a couple of years ago is this why just to get rid of the people because every walmart you go to is getting less and less people yeah. No, okay. it's, it's it's less expensive. Oh, like on, on all ends, <laughs> like lawsuits lines. and everything. So, okay, totally. Yeah, it, all, right, all around. Yeah, exactly, all around. Robotics. Expensive. Like Makes I would sense. rather, if I owned a Walmart, I would rather pay for security versus paying for a customer service rep when I which that I can make a robot. Right, and HR departments. So. I think we need to get rid of those everywhere. Golly. Anyway, sorry. Right. Buddy. Well. Well, y'all have a good show. I'll I'll get back to it. I'll keep listening. All right. Thanks, Icarus. Appreciate you. Peace. Yeah, so I, I, everything she's saying, so the the split up of the Gen Z, I guess within, we're talking about the end cap of the Gen Z, those 18, 19, uh, 20, 21, whatever, because we are seeing those in the, um, in the, in the job field now so right. we are seeing them working at mcdonald's and kentucky and different things kentucky fried chicken and different things like that mm-hmm. and i know during the pandemic it was rough man it right. was I, I i kind of i i feel for them because during the pandemic they had to do a lot and figure things out which they were not used to as far as right. you know sanitation um keeping the mask on trying to provide good cost, customer service and everything at the same time but i felt like during the pandemic a lot of them were losing like I they don't were, feel bad for they, them. they were terrible during I the don't pandemic feel bad for them. okay and i'm going to tell you why because those are the things that you should be doing anyway you should be doing the proper sanitation anyway right. Right. you should be making sure that you're not talking to where you're having droplets fall on somebody's food or face I, how many times have you been talking to someone in the past and, they, and they've waitress. talked to you right. and they spit drop hit your lip and your mm-hmm. mouth just stay open until you can go wipe it off because you're mm-hmm. like they just spit on my mouth yeah. on my face yeah. so i think at the end of the day i understand what you're saying mm-hmm. but at the same time like uh, some of us older generation people as you should say we were taught how to struggle we were taught to struggle we we were brought up in the struggle how to survive let me say Mm -hmm. that so we 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 were told like to make sure you have bags of uh beans in the cabinet we were told to have rice we were told to keep water we were told if you want to just be frank we were told how to boil water if you hot water wasn't working Mm -hmm. or even how to use kerosene lamps etc etc candles or whatever for heat and light so because we went through or i went through those types of things Right. This was kind of like, although it was definitely hard, I was able to adapt because I'm like, okay, yeah. I've been in these times before. But you're right, people who haven't, they were able to be put on the same playing field of, of those of us who have. Yeah. So I feel like everybody was on the same playing field. So if nothing else, it taught you how to humble yourself. It taught you how to be more clean. You know what I mean? Because you had to be clean. I, I, thought, I, I, I thought that was right until I, I saw a dude walk out of the bathroom yesterday and I wash his hands. Once again, I was like, this is back to the nasty back world. He was nasty anyway. And I, I agree Facts. I agree with that, uh, Kasha. But still, you, you still have to look at if you were taught that and you had a baby, then, you know, you're teaching your baby that. But some of us who were not taught that are those who neglected to, to teach their babies that. Now they're Generation Z or millennials who don't know about that because nobody told them. So right. I think that it's kind of, mm. that's why I said this, it's kind of, you, you kind of feel bad because some, some parents believe, okay, I struggled. I don't want my baby to struggle. Mm-hmm. So maybe they didn't even tell their baby about the times that they didn't have hot water and they had mm-hmm. to boil hot water. So they didn't teach them that. So their baby is growing up 
privileged, not really, but privileged to where they don't know that. So now if they have to go back to that, they looking at their mama like, what? And the mama, she taking care of business because she know what to do, but she never taught them. Right. Because they never had to. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? I kind of see that yeah. in a little bit in how you were. Yeah, absolutely. Like you say, there's a lot of stuff y'all just did not know. Absolutely. We didn't know. Yeah. And see, and then it, and it's different also being raised in the country for right. you and for you. If you're raised in a country setting, like my, my mom, yeah. she was raised in a country setting to where she knew how to do all those things. And I'm talking about my, my current mom, mm-hmm. but my mom before her and my father, not so much. Right. So the only thing that I remember knowing how to do was to boil water when our hot, when our water got cut off or when our, but other than that, um, beans, cooking beans, didn't know how to do it until I got older. Yeah. And some, you know, my some cousin st- told me. So it's just, yeah. I think my a lot parents, of stuff was, st- a lot of stuff was desired. They didn't though, tell like. me. I'm just, and I understand what you're saying because yeah, def- everybody yeah. has different backgrounds and upbringings. I'm not saying that by no means. I'm not trying to be insensitive to that, that mm-hmm. fact. Right. I'm just saying sometimes we had to figure it out. Yeah. Like I've lived on both spectrums to where, yeah. you know, we were pretty middle class, well off. My father was in the military. We were pretty well off financially. Then they got a divorce. Then, then our, our financial situation changed. Right. We stayed with my, um, and I'm just going to be a little transparent, my great-grandmother, who she was really still back in the slavery times. And I'm saying that because I don't know if she was dealing with dementia. It's a whole other episode that we may talk about mental health. But yeah. she had everything from back that time, like an outhouse. We it was like an outhouse. Like, what is that? She yeah. had an outhouse. She had a wood stove, which yeah, means we had to that. chop wood. She had a, a ice box, not a refrigerator, an ice box. That means we bought block ice yep. to keep everything cold. This is as a kid seeing these things. You, I mean, I was in a shell shock, but at the same time, we had to learn to adapt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I get what you're saying, but this was just a prime example of that we have to learn to adapt in ha- good and bad times. But if she didn't have a desire, natural desire to want to learn or do any of those things because it wasn't embedded in her, is that a problem too? Like you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think it that was goes a, back to it being get on me. No, I'm saying that goes back to it being a parent's fault. Well, I, I, yes and no. I feel like I feel like with in life we're certain things that we are taught, right? And certain things that we just kind of know. It's, but you it's, have to, to want to know it. Like if you don't want to know about well, changing a tire, and your dad never told you about it, you're never gonna know about it unless you desire to want, it, or you have to go. Yeah. Through something well, that's what I'm right. saying. Certain things you're right. taught. Certain things, like you say, you can't teach. Like work ethics and morals. Right. Okay. I mean, you could tell somebody how to do it, but some okay. people just have it. It's an innate exactly. ability. Yeah. You can't really explain it, yeah. mm-hmm. but it's there. So I think that sometimes you have little kids like, oh, my gosh. I was the one who, my mom was like, oh, my gosh, you're going to have your kids with white gloves cleaning up. Like, you you just too, like, oh, I don't know. And she, but she was the same way. My mom was really yeah. uh, anal about germs and stuff. Yeah. So that transposed on to oh, me. You. Yeah. you know what I mean? So, granted, it's just, I mean, hey. See, and yeah. that's 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 a hard sell, but so we it won't. Is. We you know everybody has their opinions on what these uh, Gen Zs and yeah and millennials go through. I want to talk about real quick before we get into um, our break or f- before we go to our break. Some of the companies that are known for having the worst customer service. Oh man! And so I read this. Go. I read this article. It says Maya Angela once said that people forget what you said and what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. It is therefore no surprise Forbes reported that firms lose over $75 billion due to poor customer service. It is in common knowledge that entrepreneurs should treat their customers like royalty. Unfortunately, not every employee will uphold this principle. Hence, some will be rude to the clients, causing customers to shop elsewhere. And so these are just a few that I um, that I pulled from the list. Bank of America. Mm. Is one of the uh, companies that is known for bad customer service. Mm-hmm. Albertsons companies known Albertsons for bad customer close. service. United States Postal Service (USPS) uh, known for bad customer service. Walmart mm-hmm. known for bad customer service. United Airlines, McDonald's, which um, I think it says that some people might have been surprised, but they have been ranking at the bottom of customer service since 1995. Golly. Spirit Airlines, um, if your flight is delayed, it says for an entire day, you will get no apologies through food or hotel vouchers or anything, and and that's true because I've had that happen to me. And then Cox Communications. Like Cox Cable? Cox, Cox, yeah, Cox Cable. Trash. Um, And so I... um, I said all that to say that big, big companies 
also have a problem with bad customer service. But to me, a bigger company can still last or outlast a smaller company because they're able to just, okay, well, we got bad customer service. Somebody complained about an employee. All right, we'll fire them, get another one, you whatever. You think McDonald's cares or, about customer service? I, I don't think so okay. because they know they know that they're such a staple you know, in the world right now that they're like, we can just do whatever. We can go hire the Chick-fil-A yeah, training guy to train our sorry-ass staff, couldn't we? Yeah, if we they can, cared about it. We can do whatever, mm-hmm. and and um and it doesn't matter. So I think, though, that even though they're bigger companies and they're doing that, the smaller companies need to maintain some sense of urgency when it comes right. to retention of their customers because you, as a smaller company you can't do what a bigger company can you can't rehire or you can't revamp or you can't fight a lawsuit once you right. get a bad uh, a bad mm-hmm. customer service review or something like that or whatever it's rough to come back from that absolutely See, rough. I look at it a little different and I mean I've had with the people that you stated more good customer service experiences than bad mm-hmm. but at the same time this is just big you know worldwide industries mm-hmm. so at the same you can't think expect every person that works there is going to be a good employee right you can only fake for so long so yeah. they can probably be hired and be the best nicest people but once after some time comes their real true character comes out mm-hmm. yeah. now i see that you're a horrible person in this place and we replace you but as to where you are a mom and pop or a smaller entity you don't have the luxury of having hundreds and thousands of employees you got 10 yeah so you got to make sure that those 10 are on point mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm that's just I want to I want to piggyback on that, but yes, that's exactly what I was gonna say. So I think that like you, I, I use Chick Fil A a lot. It's even I love Chick Fil A's, mm-hmm. but customer I think they um uh, they should use that motto. Everybody should have that motto. How come everybody can't have that motto? Yeah, because yeah. they're gonna. I think get- I think they do something even bigger than like hiring people. They like pull certain personality types to even hire in the beginning. But here's the deal. People <laughs> also still complain about it. Yeah. Oh, because they off on Sunday. They closed on Sundays because yeah, they're Christian. A reason. So I'm just saying, it's, it's right. it, it, you, you danged if you do, danged if you don't on that situation. But granted, they, they found the motto to say, the more people know that we're great business people, the more people are going to want to come dine with us, which is true. But McDonald's is like, well, sh- it shouldn't matter if my ice cream machine is always out. The ice cream machine always broke. At McDonald's, they need to just, you know, whatever. But at the same time, people are still going to come and get that 59 cent cheeseburger or however yeah. much cheeseburger costs. Right. I don't eat it. I'm sure it's like $3. Well, now. I mean, what? maybe I don't she eat cheeseburgers. She's been there since the 80s, but <laughs> so I'm sure it's like $3 now. 70s or whatever. Yeah. Cheeseburgers, them little things. $3. I think it's like $3 now. It's not. It's probably like a dollar. I think it's like no. 2 or $3 now. No. Well, I don't sure. eat cheeseburgers. I haven't eaten McDonald's meat in many, 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 many McDonald's years. McDonald's has meat. It's about a dollar. Well, you know what? Processed stuff. We're about to take a break, you guys. Um, <laughs> if you are just tuned in, you are listening to Intimate Conversations on Hot 702.5 with Talitha and Bobby and our good friend Kasha Brown. And we are talking about Hi, May I Help You, Customer Service, and Your Business. And we're going to talk about that phrase when we come back. Yes, we are. Yeah. Uh, so so many times they call me. So many times they call me. Yeah, yeah, okay. While rolling and serving, while rolling and serving, while rolling and serving, while rolling. So many times they call me. While rolling and serving, while rolling. So many times they call me. While rolling and serving, while rolling and serving. Call my phone, that's why my shit stay jumping. So many people call my phone, that's why my money come. So many people call my phone and they call my too. So many people call my phone and they call shot it too. Bitches drop what was rolling up on the 4800. Look up to this and look up to stack, you know that they run it. So busy up on the freeway, I'm doing a hundred. I represent Dallas, a young nigga, the Chevy, I got it. I'm riding in Bugna, I'm up in the Grove. The holler my partner, and send me a phone. Got a scoop of them pills, got the drink pop seals. Jump busy up boss, drop boy reveals. So many times they call me. So many times they call me. So many times they call me. So 
time they call me. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm rolling and serving. I'm rolling and serving. I'm rolling and serving. Yeah, there's something. <laughs> yeah. There was like some sort of extra feedback. Welcome back time. to Entertainment Conversations with Talitha and Bobby, presented by Food for the Soul here on Hot 702.5. FM and today's sponsor is Total Relaxation, offering a mediation or meditation. I'm sorry, meditation experience for the inner peace you need. Yeah. Mental health should be a number one priority in the lives of yourself and your family. Keeping everyone grounded and healthy leads to a more balanced, refreshed, and joyful life. Go to www.totalrelaxationlv.com for more information. Breathe, meditate, balance, heal, and repeat. Perfect. So thank you, Total Relaxation LV. And we're continuing our discussion on customer service, the bad and the good. But before we get back to it, we have to get to Bobby B's actual factuals. Hey. So let us have it, Bob. Customer service. Look, buddy. If you don't have the joy for serving the customer, even pass a point of anger, you might want to consider going to get you a contactless driving gig or a cool overnight stock position at Walmart because your face-to-face -face ministry is out of commission. Don't feel bad. It's just that your weak-ass customer service skills like to ruin my day. I have the right mind to sit and post outside your gig and wait for you to get off. I sort of feel like dra dra dragging you through this drive through window and spanking the hot fire to you like a child in the 50s. Ooh wee, I tell you, please do humanity a favor and either one, learn, a good, how, learn how to apply good customer service vernacular to your vocabulary, or two, beat yourself up. You're a bum ass idiot if you think that I'm gonna sit here and accept the fact that your manager hired you here at Chick-fil-A with this particular amount of skills. At any rate, go. Go find yourself a good security position somewhere that requires you uh, minimal human access. Fix your mess before some fella having a worse day than you decides to make you national news. Buster. Oh, actual facts. Factual okay. <laughs> so the actual fact is we allow Bobby to just kind of get out everything that he feels and thinks <laughs> that he wants to say. Okay. That is hilarious, man. That is so true, man. There are so many people in customer service that don't need to be there's so many jobs you can do where you don't need to be service. in people's face if you yeah, they don't they don't they don't need to have that job just because they're not good at it man they're not good at it and um i feel for that day yeah. when they're having a bad day and then that person michael douglas from the movie falling down if i remember correct comes in because he has a bad what? day and or he starts, unhinged and he starts shooting up people absolutely <laughs> what uh because he's having a bad day and so i think we need to be mindful of that and I think I'm going to talk about that too so we're always on the same page when it comes to that but I want to switch gears and I want to talk about customer service when it comes to our culture and other cultures and so I found an article I'm probably not going to be able to read all of it but I'm going to read some of it and so it says black owned businesses and customer service and why we're done with the stereotype a few weeks ago we asked our followers for their opinions on what stops them from shopping at black owned businesses and one complaint that came up frequently was poor customer service. Both in the UK and in the US this is an association that people usually make with black businesses and it's detrimental it's a detrimental stereotype that's harming the very businesses we say that we are here to support. And then I ask or it asks why do we look at black owned businesses through a harsher lens? Is this stigma that is this, is this stig, stigma that causes people to give up on black-owned businesses altogether? But there is nothing to say that a bad experience in one place will be repeated in another, except the assumption that poor customer service is a trait common to the entire black entrepreneur community. We could all probably recount a negative encounter with a mainstream brand, but it's unlikely to have stopped us from using them or shopping at similar places. Why do we look at black owned businesses through a harsher lens? Is it because they're closer to home and we feel entitled to expect more or because of the internalized idea that black people are unskilled at enterprise? We're not justifying bad customer service or encouraging customers to lower their standards when they shop at black owned businesses, but we are asking why many black consumers give other non-black owned companies, companies the benefit of the doubt. 
And so that's the end of that article. And I want to talk about that uh, that phrase real quick before I let you guys respond and um, say what you think our biggest downfall is when it comes to customer service. But that hi, may I help you, is so funny. I took Bobby <laughs> back to Kansas City, which is where I was living, where my family is from, where I have been living for like the past 15 years or so before I moved to Dallas. And so there is a company out there, if you guys haven't heard of it, it's Gates Barbecue. Gates that was, Barbecue, baby. That, was, um, sure. that, that is owned by a black man and run by him. And so in every single place that he has opened his gates, they say, hi, may I help you? And they scream it to you when you come in the door. Yes, so as soon as you come in the door, they're like, hi, may I help you? Uh-huh. And it's so funny to me just because they all kind of sound the same. But I think that he put that in place as a good customer service reference for people when they come in the door so they know that we acknowledge them or, you know, that they acknowledge us, they see us, and they are willing to help. And although the customer service might not be the greatest or you might not you know, kind of get what you want or whatever, for me, I always go back to that, hi, may I help you? And even if something is wrong, I kind of... I'm stuck on that part because that makes me feel welcomed when I come in the door. And so I think that that was a very, very good model to put in place. Very good. Very At the very beginning and it of it. makes you hold up a standard yeah. when you're saying it. You can't be like yeah. in a bad mood, getting right. ready to say no goofy mess like that. Hi, you know man, I help you. You got you to gotta step it. your game up. Right. You got to step your game up. And yeah. so, you guys, we are at about uh, 47 after. And so, quickly, tell me what you think um, are – biggest downfall is when it comes to customer service on our end in the um in the black culture in the black so providing community. customer service or just what we providing see? providing customer service i think sometimes on people, why we get a bad rap i think that sometimes people expect for since it's a black owned business for us to have like not be as i don't want to say qualified but um our standards are not as high if that makes sense mm-hmm. like for example you expect for and this is probably totally off topic for me to give you a discount Okay. Because it's a it's a black owned business. Like you know, well, we black. We trying to come up. So can you give me that for, mm-hmm. you know, thirty dollars as opposed to fifty dollars? So I think that that's kind of how we get caught up into the bad customer service sometimes as well. You come to me for a discount and you don't go to you know Louis Vuitton for a discount. Right. But then if we have a strong conversation after that, then we are handling we have bad customer service. Okay. Yeah. So I think that just the mentality of us being like passionate about our businesses or just passionate about our delivery and letting you know that no, don't expect for me to give you a discount can be misconstrued. Now sometimes people do have bad customer service. Yeah. But again, that's just I think any any business any person nobody is going to be perfect. Okay. I think our problem is that we we're getting too close to people to even be recognized as bad customer service. We we start off too personal. Like with our naming and all of that, we're too too feelings and and emotions based in our business in the beginning okay. so that's i think we lose in that so there's no reason to even fight it after that you're talking about in our business names that we choose yeah like okay. i talked about joshua 24 burgers like why would, does anybody any other race do anything like that because now you're, hold, you're held up to a standard of joshua 24 yeah that's biblical you know and it's like does anybody else do that there's too many feelings in that right you know just name it burgers right you know like anybody else would do and you just come get burgers i'm not don't worry about my religion none of my none of that Right. You know, we're just talking about eating this food here, and that's. I think we get too caught up in feelings, and we lose from the from the gate. And that's and and I believe that too because I, there's a difference between there's a difference between business and ministry. Right. And I think that we as um, African Americans, we really need to learn the difference. Your ministry can be a business. Um, your business can be a ministry, but they are not really the same thing. So if I'm ministry, I can name my ministry Talitha Kume because it means little girl arise and that's a ministry for me so i'm right. doing everything biblical um i'm going you know I'm, I'm staying true to my roots and different things like that but if i want to name a, a company or something like that like food for the soul which i named our um our radio uh company it, it deals with a, a facet of all things yeah. and so i'm not coming at you like you know john chapter 3 verse 16 so you're going to hold me to that standard and like you said I'm so personal with it now so now when you come at me if I do anything uh, that's uh, contradictory to John three sixteen. yeah then you, you don't want to do business with me I ain't yeah. never seen no A-Rab or somebody yeah. at the gas station not want to sell me 
cigars because I'm, you know, not none of that. They right. don't do their business. Right, right. If I got a gas station, then I'm selling you cigars. Yes. And I might sell you some I'm CBD oil and you're some homosexual. weed. What? You know, like what, what? You're you know, so I agree. With that. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I, I can, can, I can completely agree with that, you guys. And so I wanted to, I, I found an article about some great customer service skills. I wanted to read them off real quick before we get into Kasha letting us know what's going on with her yeah. before we get out of here. And so this article just said that there are some good customer service skills that we should have and some skills you should look for when you are hiring people to work for your brand or your company. And it says, one, you need to make sure that the person or that we show empathy. We need to make sure that we have good listening skills. So we're listening to customers as they talk to us so we know exactly what they need. Um, we need to have integrity. We need to have a positive attitude. I know sometimes that's hard, but if I'm working for somebody, you know, I can't bring my personal business into my job. It's not, it's, mm -hmm. it's not their fault. It's not their problem. So I need to have a positive attitude. Decision-making ability. You need to be able to make decisions, you know, and that you need to give your employees the ability to make decisions when you're not there or teach them how to make decisions. Then you need to think on your feet. Sometimes things happen and you gotta be able to move, but think on your feet. Think about, you know, maybe what you would want in this situation. Yeah. It says you need to be patient. Make sure that you uh, display <coughs> patience when people come in. Make sure that you have persistence, as in if maybe I'm helping somebody with a problem, I'm gonna be persistent in trying to find out how I can help them, you know, in any way possible so that they can go away with a good customer service experience. Yeah. Also, product knowledge. If you're working for a company that sells products, know about the dang on products. Don't say, I don't know. Ooh, That's I the craziest know, thing ever. And I had to learn that, you guys. I really had to learn that as a young person, you know, coming into um, my adulthood by saying, hey, you know, if I don't know, let me figure it out. I'm not sure about that, but let me try and, and uh, put you on hold for a minute and try and figure out what that has or what that is or blah, blah, whatever, and then I'm going to get back to you. So I've learned how to do that instead of sounding like an idiot, saying, I don't, I, don't, I don't know, let me transfer you to somebody who might know. Right. I mean, that's crazy. And then also the last one is progress, uh, a progressive mind so just having a progressive mind as far as you know initiative taking initiative maybe something doesn't work this way but you can figure it out to work that way just so you can you, you can provide good customer service so those are some of the Facts. things that um that we need in our small businesses to make sure that we have longevity you guys yeah. to make sure that we stay around yeah and so kasha i want you to let everybody know how they can reach you and anything you have coming up and then how <coughs> tell them how you can help the people start giving better customer service because that's what you do right oh wow that's what you do she's trying to put me on the spot well, yeah. that's what? fine i can rise to that occasion mm -hmm. so first of all um on instagram it is i am kasha brown spelled k-a-s-s-h-a -S 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 last name brown like the color um on instagram i am kasha brown on facebook it's just kasha brown um, what I have coming up right now, I am a part of two amazing companies, one being uh, Happy Products, which is a skin and hair care brand. They have two products right now that they're pushing, which is a pomade, an nat all-natural pomade, all-natural ingredients. Um, it's amazing. I'm going to say it's like a smoothie for the skin and for the hair. You can find them on um, Instagram as well at Happy Products, spelled H. AAPI products that's on Instagram or you can just go to happyproducts.com and you can order you some it's amazing for the skin face hair lips everything it's amazing and it's black owned Good. lastly um, 1186 that's uh, the word spelled out 11 and the number 86 it's actually a black owned water company out of Otagoville Alabama and um, and right now you can actually purchase online or you can purchase in HEB stores primarily in Houston Texas or Alabama amazing ultra premium water it's like well spring water i went actually to the plant and it's amazing you gotta gotta get you some it's amazing and it's affordable and it's comparable to like all the high-end waters like um fiji core uh essential all those i would say it's better than nice so yeah and customer service i would definitely say i would tell people to pay attention to your your clientele the people that you're servicing and then try to just meet their needs by supplying them with the answers that they need the questions that they have make sure that those are answered and i mean just being a morally good overall person i mean you know every situation is different so i don't really have one specific answer nice all right, so you guys, we are almost at time. So no matter what the culture or background, treat people like you want to be treated and understand that good customer service helps the world thrive. So a special announcement alert. Tune in this Monday and every fourth Monday on 88.1 at 9 a.m. where Big Bobby B's new radio show will be airing 
Pretty Vision, where he discusses all things fashion from a designer point of view. And be sure to tune in tomorrow on FB Live for our new show, Rude Awakening, with me and my girl Terry at 2 p.m. Yeah. Also, tune in next week for our movie Monday of the week at 6 p.m. Yep, Pacific yep. Standard Time, live on our FB page. And I am going to the Oscars, you guys. So hey. let's see how that works out. Our show has been sponsored in part by Total Relaxation, Brown Girl Inc., and Orlay Worldwide. It's your girl, Talitha Kume. And your boy, Big Bobby B. And we are out giving you something to talk about. Hey, hey. Have a good one.